deck. They have, they have to be able, that's got to be so bright on that ship. Hello out there, everybody. Manny here at Area 503. And I hope you all have been well since our last video. Today I just want to talk with you all about some recent UFO sightings from around the world and a brief interview with President Trump on the topic of UFOs and unknown aerial phenomenon. Check out this clip. We're reading more and more reports of Navy pilots seeing lots and lots of UFOs. Have you been yeah, briefed on that? What do you I make have, of it? I have. I, I think it's probably... Uh, I want them to think whatever they think. They do say, I mean, I've, see, I've seen and I've read and I've heard and I did have one very brief meeting on it, but people are saying they're seeing UFOs. Do I believe it? Not particularly. Do you think you'd know if there were evidence of extraterrestrials? Well, I think my great, our great pilots would know. Uh, and some of them really see things that are a little bit different than in the past. So we're gonna see, but we'll watch it. You'll be the first to know. So, the president had a short briefing about UFOs and UAP, but he doesn't particularly believe in them. He does, however, admit that our pilots are the ones who would know. And I agree with him, the pilots would know. Generally speaking, both commercial and military pilots are extremely reluctant to make a UFO report. But let's see what the mouth of the White House has to say on the subject. No, not that mouth. Press Secretary Huckabee. When asked, she said this on the subject. Uh, does the president believe in the existence of UFOs and would he be interested in restoring funding for that program? Somehow that question hasn't come up in our back and forth over the last couple days, but I will uh, check into that and be happy to circle back. So the press secretary either genuinely didn't know the answer to the question, or she ducked the question by stating that she would come back to it, which, to the best of my knowledge, she never did. Either way, we don't get an answer. There was, however, a speech that President Trump gave to Marines shortly before he announced the creation of the Space Force. Check this out. My new national strategy for space recognizes that Space is a warfighting domain, just like the land, air, and sea. We may even have a space force, we'll develop another one, space force. We have the Air Force, we'll have the Space Force, we have the Army, the Navy. Space is a warfighting domain. Well, I would like to respectfully disagree with the President on this one. The spirit of the Space Treaty of 1967 suggests otherwise. In fact, Article 1 states, quote, The exploration and use of outer space, including the moon and other celestial bodies, shall be carried out for the benefit and in the interests of all countries, irrespective of their degree of economic or scientific development, and shall be in the province of all mankind, end quote. Now that hardly sounds like a war-fighting domain to me. Unless you're talking about UFOs and aliens. People are saying they're seeing UFOs. Do I believe it? Not particularly. Well, now I'm really confused. Anyhow, now we're gonna have a space force just in case. So I guess that's good to be prepared because you never know what the future holds. And that's about all I can take talking about politics, so let's move on to our first sighting, which takes place on June 14th, 2019, over Lake Superior in Michigan. This clip has me extremely excited. It shows a pair of orb UFOs flying over the lake. The orbs keep blinking in and out and merging and then separating again. Yeah, it's moving towards us. Like, real fast moving towards us and there's no sound you can't hear anything and now it's stopped it's hovering this is the craziest thing i've ever seen in my life it really is an intriguing sighting 
At first I thought it might be a pair of drones, but they appear to be way too bright to be any sort of commercial drone. And they sure are behaving strangely. Here you can get a real good shot of these things as they move over this boat. It's like hovering above the deck. Yeah, but they have to be able to, that's got to be so bright on that ship. Yeah, somebody's got to be able to see that on that ship. They pass slowly over the length of the boat, and then they move away, almost as if they were inspecting the vessel. Maybe it's just a flare, I don't know. No flare seems like that, and it's bright. Yeah. And then here, the UFOs move up and away from the boat. And it pulses like it gets brighter and then dimmer, and now it's getting dim, dimmer and dimmer. Almost gone. Now there's two. Whoa. Did yeah, you see that? See, now the bottom one's gone. The one UFO phased out, and then the other UFO phased in. It's almost as if these things are working as a team. I don't know. What do you all think? This thing is just damned peculiar, and I really don't know what to make of it. So I think I'm just going to file this one away under unknown and move on for now. Our next sighting took place over Crum, West Virginia on June 14th. A witness reported to MUFON this strange flying disc caught on a film. Check out this clip. Okay, hold it right there. That was way too fast. Let's back this thing up and slow it down so we can take a better look at it. I had to slow this video down to one-tenth speed to get a good shot of it. Here you can see the UFO entering the bottom left of the screen and it appears to fly upwards and towards the witness. This really is a stunning piece of footage and we get several frames to analyze from this sighting, which is fortunate for us. Okay, let me stop it right here. Here we first get a good look at this UFO as it enters the frame, and at first it just appears as a little white speck. But as I start this back up, keep an eye on the movement pattern of this thing. It almost appears as if it's traveling in a horizontal direction at first, but then it changes direction and it moves upwards and towards the witness. That's so peculiar. So here we have a fast moving UFO that changes direction. To me that suggests some kind of intelligence is operating it. What a find. But what is this thing? Let's see if any of the still frames have a better shot of it. Holy crap. I have to tell you, the second I stopped this frame, my heart skipped a beat. Look at that thing. What a pristine example of an orb UFO caught in the daylight. Take a look at the definition and the shadowing on that UFO. Let's compare it to a shadow on one of the buildings. Wow, I have to say that really looks legitimate to me. And judging by the size, it appears to be slightly larger than that air conditioning unit. I truly am astonished by this sighting, and I am at a loss to explain what sort of man-made object could move so quickly. In my opinion, this is either a legitimate UFO sighting or a sighting of some sort of top secret craft. But I'm leaning towards it being a UFO spotted in Crum, West Virginia. So I'm going to add this one to my UFO files, and we will move on. which takes us to Derry, New Hampshire, where an amateur drone operator caught some pretty strange footage. This was April 11th, about 1.40 in the afternoon. Simply just was out with the dog practicing flying this and, and didn't see anything until I got home. 
he was test flying his new mini quadcopter with its GoPro camera that day. Off two goes. And what it saw above the Robert Frost homestead in Derry has left him mystified. It crossed this entire sky in less than a second, in a little over half a second. Something zipped from left to right, shot as the copter was still warming up on the ground, barely visible until he slowed the video down. And when I went back and looked at it, frame by frame, I just couldn't explain what, what that was. Wow, that really is one fast-moving UFO. Check that thing out. I really like this sighting because the witness didn't even know that he had captured anything. That really tells me that the UFO was silent as well as moving at a very high rate of speed. Mark Podol, the chief investigator for MUFON assigned to the case, had this to say. My personal feeling is, based on my years of uh, experience and looking at uh, multiple UFO videos and UFOs, that I believe it is, it is either an experimental aircraft that belongs to the U.S. that is unknown to us, or it's some kind of uh, off-world craft. Well, it sounds to me like he thinks that this thing is real, and I, for one, agree with him. This is another fine example of a fast-moving, silent UFO, similar to the famous Tic Tac UFO released in 2017. I'll definitely be adding this one to my UFO files, and I'll try to follow up on this story later. Let's move over to St. George, Utah for our next sighting. On June 10th, witnesses filmed this strange sight in the sky. Now, to me, this looks less like a UFO and more like some sort of atmospheric phenomenon or some kind of unidentified technology. To me, this looks like it might be some kind of ground-based laser shooting up through the atmosphere, creating a prism effect. Perhaps it's a laser telescope, or maybe it's some other type of ground-based laser. I know that ground-based lasers are being tested to power satellites, so that's a possibility. Maybe it's a test of one of those systems. Either way, I'm pretty sure it's not a UFO, so let's go ahead and move on. This brings us to our final sighting over the skies of France, where another energy or orb type of UFO was spotted. Check it out. The witness described this UFO as being brighter than the moon, which is very intriguing. But I really wanted to show this sighting to you because it reminded me instantly of a sighting here in the Northwest in November of last year. I covered that sighting in episode 11, so if you didn't get a chance to watch that one, go ahead and give it a try. Well guys, for now, that's all I've got on UFOs and unexplained sightings from around the world. Remember to keep your eyes to the sky and those cameras ready, because you never know what you might see. As always, this has been Manny at Area 503, and I wish you all the best until we meet again. And I am out of here to continue my search for universal truth. Thank you.